And now, please welcome the Vice President and Managing Director EMEA of Booking.com, Carlo Olenijak, in conversation with Skift Asia editor, Keaton Domabutia. back in Dubai. Uh, welcome, Carlo. Thank you. Um, Good to be here. Carlo, let's start the discussion right away. I, booking.com is one of the largest travel booking platforms in the world, and you had the largest market for them. So, you know, can you tell us about some of the travel trends that you see shaping up uh, globally and in your region, and also talk about some Middle East-specific travel trends? Sure. So first, what we have seen is that the, the travel demand is extremely resilient and, and even much more resilient than what we could have expected. Uh, 2000, at the end of 2022 was already a record-breaking year for Booking.com with a total of 900 million room nights. We grew our room nights by 6% versus 2019 and the revenue by 13%, meaning that already at the end of 22, we were above pre-pandemic levels which was really not expected. Then the question is getting into 23, how is it going to happen? Is it just a travel revenge or is it a trend that is here to stay? And then the Q1, the first quarter was already a, a, a record breaking quarter. We grow the revenue by 40% versus the previous year. Meaning that people still are willing to travel and also what we saw is that they were booking much, much more in advance. So that's one of the first trend. Then Q2 was also higher than expected. Uh, we grew uh, the volume by 9%, the revenue by 27%. And, and I can tell you when we were getting into the summer, uh, which is for, for booking for, for the European region, for the Northern Hemisphere, the key period, because this is where people travel, basically we were wondering whether there was still enough demand, basically, to, to, to fill up the, the, the rooms that were available. And then we saw at the beginning of Q3, the third quarter, the business started accelerating again leading to the strongest summer ever. We grew our volumes by 15%, our revenue by 21%, so, so very strong. And what are the trends that we have seen during this period? Mainly, basically, very resilient uh, travel demand. People are not trading down. We don't see them booking cheaper category hotels or reducing their length of stay. On the contrary, they tend to book earlier and they cancel less. We also see that the international mix of room nights has recovered to pre-pandemic levels. So 50% of the room nights in, in Q3 were international room nights. What we also see is that people tend to book much earlier in advance. So for instance, last year in February, 30% of the bookings made in Europe were for checkout dates in May and onwards. People book much, much earlier. What we also see is that, you know, what we have learned during the pandemic is that we, we all I've been working from home, we all like it, and then we also discovered that not only we can work from home, but we can work from anywhere. And this has also created a very big uh, increase in the demand for our industry. So it's a huge opportunity. And one of the consequences, we see more and more last minute weekend bookings. So people are really eager to travel. So whenever they have the opportunity, they will make that trip, which maybe they would not have made before. And what we already see is the pattern of a traditional weekend, which should, used to be two nights, now is more three or four nights. So that's, that's a big chance, a huge opportunity for us. What we also see is that people tend to cancel less, but at the same time, they still want to book in a safe environment. So 80% of the bookings are made on flexible, uh, still made on flexible policies. So consumers, travelers are looking for flexibility, ease of use, as a consequence, we see the share of mobile bookings growing. Two-thirds of the mobile bookings on our platform are made on a mobile device. In this region, it is even higher, so people rely even more on their mobile device. And what we have seen is that in Q3, so during the summer, 50% of the room nights booked on booking were booked on our app, which was the, the, the first time that we were above 50%, which represented a growth of 6 percentage points versus the year before. So flexibility, mobile is very important. I would say the last trend, macro trend, is the focus on sustainability. So I'm sure that you, everyone is aware of this. And, and the focus on sustainability or the, the top of mind is even bigger in this region. So 80% of the travelers tell us that 
travel, travel in a sustainable way is important to them. So this is when we ask global travelers, when we ask travelers in the UAE, this is 90%. So travelers want to travel more sustainably. So that's the, the macro trends. Uh, what we have seen also, if we want to look more in the, into the UAE, it's really the, 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 the leveraging of the mobile, which is even uh, stronger. You know, the Booking.com app is the most downloaded app uh, in the world, but also in the UAE and in Saudi. And if we want to discuss some of the more uh, um, specific trends for the UAE, we have just issued a travel prediction report, uh, which we have conducted in 20, uh, in 33 countries. Uh, we have surveyed 28,000 travelers, including 500 in the UAE. And when we ask UAE travelers what they want, basically, they want a uh, cooler climate, they want sustainability, they want new experiences, new culinary experiences, they want plenty of sleep, they want time for themselves, and, and they're also looking for financial savings. Okay, um, interesting insights on UAE travel. Um, Carlo, how do you, I mean like you have this huge geography that you navigate, right? How do you tackle the split between the E and the MEA part of it? I mean, are these like really different markets or for all you know, they might be more similar than most people think? I mean, we are a global company, so we tend to approach the market in a global way, and that's one of the reasons why Booking.com has been successful for, for more than 20 years. But then I would say every market is also very specific. You know, in my job, I travel to every different country almost every week. And if you think that because you are French, you understand uh, the south of French market, or because you are European, you understand the south of Spain, versus Catalonia, it's, they are totally different markets. The needs are different, the seasonality is different, the type of partners is different, you know. Is Italy, are Italy and Spain two similar markets? They are very different, you know. And then when we look into uh, the specificities of UAE, of the Middle East, and again, the Middle East, it's also a very diverse region, stem for Africa. So I think we always need to have a global approach to bring the value of uh, a, a scalable model, but also we need to understand what are the local specificities. And I, I would say one of our strengths is, is to have a local presence. You know, we have uh, 140 offices everywhere in the world in more than 70 countries. We have 70 offices just in the Europe, Middle East, and Africa region. We have a big office here in Dubai uh, with almost 40 people. And I would say that it's very important. And, you know, I always tell the teams, you know, what we know centrally and to what you know locally, so don't be shy. We, we also need to get their input, and that's part of, you know, the, I would say one of our strengths. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, you talked about how different the markets are. So when booking approaches a new market, how do you, how, how do you look to localize yourself to those newer markets? And how do you, how do you work towards demand generation from these markets? Yeah, so I, I think that that's very important. The, the, what, what people, you know, what our partners want from us is basically to bring them demand, to bring them incremental demand. So what we do, so we have a global approach, but we have a global approach that is, which I would say, glow localized, you know? It's global, but also very much localized. So we invest currently in more than 20 different uh, marketing channels. So uh, performance marketing, SEO, metas, uh, remarketing, uh, messaging, push notifications, sponsorship, brand, PR. So more than 20 different marketing channels. And we have a team, a dedicated team of 50 data scientists, engineers, artificial intelligence specialists, whose job is only to build up a pipeline of demand for our partners and to increase conversion, to improve conversion. And we have 3 million partners in the world. So it's a lot of work to do every morning. So that's their job. And what we do is that basically also using um, our machine learning models, we can identify what is the level of intent of the different travelers. And then the question is to use the right channel depending on the level of intent of the travelers. So for high intent travelers, we'll be leveraging performance marketing search channels. For medium intent travelers, basically we're going to leverage digital media, advertising, but also app acquisitions. And for low intent travelers, we'll basically be mainly leveraging brand campaigns, uh, PR, social media, sponsorship. You know, we uh, very recently sponsored the, the Cricket World Cup in India, which has tremendous impact. We'll be sponsoring the Euro 
in Germany um, this summer, which is also very important. So basically, this is how we will we have a global approach, but with a uh, uh, with local relevance. Yeah, um, and you also mentioned about AI, right? And I want to uh, talk about uh, you know you've launched this beta version. I think we have a video yeah. as well, the beta version of your AI trip planner. So um, tell us a little bit about it, and also about is this the future of travel search? And are we saying goodbye to Google now? Okay, so I would say, talking about AI and, and what we're currently testing. So our mission at booking.com is very simple, is to make it easier for everyone to experience the world. And the question is, how are we going to do that? So basically our mission is to build a connected trip and to make every trip a connected trip. So how are we going to do that? Basically the idea is to integrate or to aggregate all the different trip verticals, so not only accommodations, which we are known for, but also flights, car rental, rides, and attractions. And, uh, but also, the idea is also not only to aggregate these elements, but also all the different components of the trip, so also the traveler actions from the search stage all the way to the actual experience of the trip, but also the traveler preferences, including their uh, past trip and current preferences to be able to personalize uh, our recommendation, and also the idea is to connect the trip with our partners, with the places and the communities. For instance, by pro proposing more in-trip experiences, and also by facilitating more sustainable travel choices. So that's the vision. And I would say the next step of the vision is AI. AI will play a very central role in this vision, because we think that AI is going to help us accelerate the implementation of the connected trip, improve the customer experience, improve the experience of our partners, basically by helping the travelers in the upper section of the booking funnel to, to get more inspiration, to be able to discover new facilities, to be able to identify hidden gems that they're going to be, to be using. So that's really how we're going to, to use AI. AI is a way to um, increase the level of customization, the level of personalization that we can bring um, to our customers, but we are, it's, it's the very early stages, so but we are, we are quite lucky because we have been leveraging AI, ma machine learning models for, for quite a while already. Of course, you mention, mentioned that it is very early stages. Also, uh, you, we discuss a lot about human error. Uh, there is something called the machine error as well, right? I mean, like, has it made mistakes and sent, say, for instance, if I want to travel to Austria, Somebody wanting to travel to Austria, has it sent them to Australia? No. Oh, yes. So again, I would say that that's why we're, it's a beta, that's why we're testing. You know, at Booking, we have a culture of experimenting. So we test, learn, fail, test again, learn, fail, and move on. And I would say with any new technology, we always need to use these new technologies in a very cautious way. Also to make sure that we protect the customers and that, that we do the right thing. So we are testing. What I can say is that the first results are quite uh, positive and, and we see a positive impact on the overall traveler experience. But the objective, you know, the vision is very simple, make it easier. We want to make the trip a seamless experience. And we know that if we manage to delight the traveler when they are on their trip, when they are using their services, we will increase their loyalty, their retention, and this is how we are going to be able to make a difference. And what is the data that it's trained on? Is it like open web or booking.com? So basically we are combining our own proprietary data with generative artificial intelligence, basically to inspire the, the, the travelers at the early stage of their trip planning. Okay, and uh, what are your learning, some of the learnings from the uh, you know, beta version, developing the beta version? So it's still very early stages. What we can tell is that the, it has a positive impact on the traveler experience. They use it very much to find new ideas, to find these uh, places, these uh, that they, maybe they would not know, to also identify what they can do in the different destinations. But it's really changing the way they plan for their trip and the way they search, which is, which is quite interesting. And again, the end game, and I, I know that for everyone who is having a property and he's welcoming guests, what we're all trying to do is how we can customize the guest experience. And what we're trying to do here is to customize and personalize the guest experience from the very early stage. I mean, during the, the inspirational um, phase of the trip planning. 
Carlo, when uh, I, sp uh, I asked you about Middle East travel trends, you mentioned sustainability very pronouncedly. Yes. Um, so I know that sustainability, uh, booking.com has also launched uh, this research about uh, you know, travelers' expectation from sustainability. And we are coming off of COP28, just which uh, concluded uh, yesterday. So um, I found out from the uh, uh, booking.com uh, survey as well that about 58% of travelers find sustainable travel options very expensive. So you know, how, does, uh, how do booking platforms like booking.com and their partners work to bridge this gap between sustainability and affordability? Yes. So it's true that we, people consider that 50, that sometimes sustainable options are too expensive, but also at the same time, 54% of the UAE travelers that we have surveyed are ready to pay more for a proper certification. So they just want to make sure that they, they, they buy the right sustainable travel options. So what we do at Booking is basically to aggregate uh, more than 60 certification and eco labels that exist in the market but also make it easier for smaller properties who, who cannot afford to join, to basically enter a full certification to, to start their, um, their, their sustainable journey. So for them, we have uh, designed 32 best practices based on five categories, which are water management, waste management, green gas, house emissions, and energy consumption, support to the local communities, environmental protection. And we have developed this framework with uh, sustainability experts, so uh, the GSTC, uh, Travelist, and Sustainalize. So, and basically the idea here is to make sure that the program is a program that is developed in collaboration with these experts and validated by them. And, and the customers trust the information we give them. We have more than 300 million verified guest reviews on our platform. So our objective is really to make it easier for the travelers to find the right sustainable travel option, and also for our partners to display their sustainability effort, and for those smaller partners that cannot be fully certified to start their journey. You mentioned the sustainable travel program, and if I uh, may quote from your survey itself, uh, a significant uh, portion of the travelers have said that they do not really trust uh, sustainable travel options as being really sustainable. Because you know, I think I think consumers, uh, travelers, have become a little jaded about greenwashing, about uh, these labels, whether they are really working or not. So, um, how does the sustainable travel program help to build trust among travelers? So basically, we have currently in the program more than six hundred thousand properties that are sustainable, and by providing this information, by making it transparent and accessible, and when this is done by a trusted plat platform. This is what we can get. And also what we know is that at the end of the day, when you are a digital platform with a global footprint, people have the opportunity to express their views. So which means that if they don't receive the sustainable experience they would be willing to get, they will claim it. So that's the way. And so basically, customers, travelers trust booking, but travelers also trust other travelers using our platform. That's how we have a role to play there. And I, I think, as a uh, big online digital platform, we have a responsibility to promote uh, more sustainable travel. That, that's, that this, is, this is why we are doing it, and this is where we see and the Carl, value that we can create. Responsibility. Do you uh, would you would you go so far as delisting or deranking uh, certain properties if they do, if they are not not if they are non sustainable options? So basically, what what we would do, if for instance, if a a property uh, has identified, has listed a number of uh, attributes that are basically not happening, we will certainly remove the sustainable label from, from these properties. So we, we have a mechanism to audit these properties. We also get the feedback from our travelers, and we want basically what we're trying to make sure is to make sure that every uh, information that is um, shared on the platform is the accurate, is the accurate information. Uh, also, Carlo, when we speak about uh, sustainability, there are these researchers and surveys that talk about the fact that, yes, customers want sustainable travel options. But do you have like actual booking data showing 
consumers choosing uh, sustainable travel options, even if they are expensive? So what we know and what you all know is that there is always a gap between what we say, all of us, and what we actually do. Mm -hmm. But first, what we need to do at this stage is to educate. So by sharing the information, by explaining what, what is a good practice versus not such a good practice, I think we, have, we, have, we, have, we already have an impact. And during the last survey uh, on the, on the uh, sustainability survey, we have also asked our travelers if what were their sustainable habits. And we see that, for instance, 76% of the travelers in the, in the UAE will switch off the aircon before they leave their room, when they leave their room. Are they all doing it? We don't know. But at least the fact that they claim they are doing it, because we ask the question, then they think, oh, maybe this is something I should do. 46% do not uh, reuse the same towel. OK, is it still the truth? Maybe not, but still, now they, they get it. 56% use a reusable uh, bottle. Again, so I think, and what we have done at Booking, we have also implemented a full training program for all our employees. Because sustainability, we all talk about it, but do we really understand what it is? So we have done this program to make sure that when our account manager talk to, the, to, to our partners, they can also explain them why it is important. So our responsibility is to educate our partners, our teams, and our travelers. And this is, this is where we are at this stage in this very important journey, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, Carlo, today we've covered AI, we've covered sustainability, but, uh, you know, at one point in time, we had been uh, hearing a lot about this uh, term called revenge travel. Mm -hmm. But in 2023, we hear that the travel demand, uh, the curve, is either flattening or it's dipping. So, um, if you talk about Middle East specific, do you see uh, travel demand going, still going strong, or are they sh is it showing like signs of weakness? Okay, so what, what I've, I've given you with what was the trends until the end of Q3, but it's true that after the 7th of October and the war in the Middle East, we have seen a drop in, in, in the bookings. We have seen a drop that was even stronger in, the, uh, in this region, but also we have seen a drop, a deceleration everywhere in the world. So basically, in, during the month of October, we still grew our volume of home nights. We grew our volume of home nights globally in October by 8%, but this was down from a growth of 15% in Q3. So we have seen that growth, that, that, that deceleration. But also we are quite happy to see that during the last week in October, the business started recovering. So, which was quite a, a, a good trend, and, and so globally, but also in the region. So the impacted region, clearly not. But we see that Saudi is very resilient. We see that UAE is also uh, very resilient. And when we look at the, the rooms on the books, you know, if we look now on the rooms on the books for the beginning of the year, it's solid. We are, all, we are already seeing growth. So we don't see a deceleration in the market. We, we know that the market is extremely complex. You know, uh, we have a very complex microeconomic situation, geopolitical situation. But when we look at the trends, we can be reasonably optimistic about the future, including in this region. Mm -hmm. And finally, we have uh, very little time. So I wanted to, we hear a lot about the inbound traffic coming in from uh, other countries to the Middle East. Could you also talk a little bit about, since Booking has a presence in, in the region, about the outbound traffic going from the Middle East to other uh, countries? Yes, I would say this is very, it's for us one of the most important uh, region, uh, and if we look at the, the Middle East as a booker market, including in the Middle East, Egypt and, uh, and Turkey, basically it represents 4% of all bookings made on our platform. So it's one of the main destinations. Dubai is the second most uh, search or visited city in the world after Paris. So it's both big destinations, big outbound markets, and when you are uh, an hotelier based in uh, Europe, in Asia, or in the Americas, this is a market you want to attract because it's usually a longer booking window, longer length of stay, uh, and, 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 and good contribution. So basically, it's a market with a lot of purchasing power, which most hoteliers, most destinations are trying to attract. So basically, both very dynamic market, both in, in inbound and in outbound. So a lot of it would be luxury? It will, the, the mix of luxury, yes, we normally perceive this market as a luxury market, but not only. Okay. 
Thank you so much, Carlos, for the discussion today. I hope you all had a great time. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.